The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong. But he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it. To take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. And he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. was windswept desert. No one went there except ostriches and ostrich hunters. The Iblis Stone. It would whisper promises in his ear, offering power for blood. But this time, Bernardo was sure he could master it. And so, Bernardo went ostrich hunting. Every child could sing verses about the Sky Ripper, but ancient codices held hints of other things. A stone that ate souls, a ruby that drank blood, a jewel only a righteous man could give away. Were all these things the Iblis Stone? Long hidden in a buried temple, another ancient item that was only resurfacing now, drawn up from the deeps by the Emperor's horrific rituals, Come in handy in a pinch. Point of this gate? Did they think no one would notice the lever? get past this point. Obviously the temple builders knew how to deal with tomb raiders.
and I'd have wondered if it wasn't cheaper to build bridges and stairs. It was a stone of the purest blackness. It reflected no light, like a void made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can you, mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty. That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch. But they had been close once, and he had a sneaking suspicion the gem would try to control him. Why not capture the core of Sky Ripper instead? It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent Emperor to power his greatest weapon. Hold the core, said the stone anxiously. But even though Renato knew how evil the gem was, he had a clever plan for dealing with it. Why was he listening to a talking rock? Ah, but the rock had a point. If the stone could truly turn him into a powerful warrior, he could defeat the Emperor with the very weapon the wicked old Toad had sought for himself. To be a hero, you had to sacrifice old friends sometimes. Especially when they've become enemies. As he placed the impossibly black crystal in his gauntlet, Renata had a sudden vision. Charred fields covered in dead ravens below a black sun. Was it the time of the lost gods before the transcendent emperor? Was it the future? It whispered. He could feel the stone's hunger for souls. Its thirst for blood. All right, I get it. This was going to be interesting. on Zenobia's island were no match for Renardo. They screamed as the stones sucked out their souls. And with each death, he felt stronger. Take the power, the stone told him. He couldn't do worse with Zenobia than he'd done with the core, could he? Zenobia was waiting for Renardo. She was alone, confident as always. Fire danced at the tips of her claws. Are you here to surrender? She seemed as cocksure as he felt. But she didn't know he had the stone. And I've missed you too, love. He chuckled. She spotted the stone and bolted without another word.
Finally, Renato caught up to her. He had never seen her scared before. At school, she'd been the determined, brave one. Now her eyes were wide, frightened. He didn't like seeing her this way. Kill her, whispered the stone. You cannot win your rebellion without it. Please. No, said Zenobia. Not that way. Oh, they had been so close once. Could he really feed her soul to his demonic gem? But if he spared her, he would not get the full power of the stone. Oh, how could he be the hero he wanted to be? Renardo hesitated. Zenobia was his greatest enemy. She was the Emperor's daughter and his greatest general. And the single person Renato least wanted to remove from this world. Especially that way. She was holding her arms out before her. Hands fluttering. Fending him off with hopeless urgency. Nope. She was weaving a spell. He couldn't move. This thing is evil, she said. She slid the Ibla stone out of its slot in his gauntlet. And slipped it into a bag. Maybe we can learn from it. She eyed him with a strange, wry, apologetic look. I missed you too. And before he could move again, she was gone. Learn from the Iblis Stone? What did that mean? Would she take it to the palace or to the observatory on the Nexus? Uh, if she thought it was evil, she wouldn't want it in the palace. And, after all, it was evil, wasn't it? Maybe I can outrace her to the observatory, thought Renardo. Cats can run faster, but foxes can run longer. Renato felt a little sick. Ever since Zenobia had taken the stone from him, he'd felt an ache that wouldn't go away. He missed it. He wanted it back. He needed it back. Why hadn't he killed her when he had the chance? She was the enemy. He hadn't even seen her in 14 years. Why had he hesitated? You were a sucker for an empowered woman. Renato kicked himself. Don't make that mistake again. Zenobia thought the stone was evil. Was it? Well, yes, but he still longed to have it back. He'd felt so good killing ravens with it. And yet, he'd felt unclean ever since he'd touched it. She confused him. She'd made him want to be a better fox. And then she'd abandoned him. Never telling him she was the Emperor's daughter. Never contacting him since. Well, who is she to tell him the stone was evil? There was an inscription. No spitting.
scientist's toes were pointing arcane instruments at the stone and looking at it through prisms and reflections. Mine, said Renardo as he took back the stone. Well, we uh, need that for science, croaked the toads. So he killed them. He felt better immediately. Smarter, too. I thought you'd never come for me, whispered the stone. Then, a far speaker toad croaked in something like Zenobia's voice. Leonardo, leave the stone with the toads. It will swallow your soul. You will kill everyone you love. That did seem vaguely familiar. But Renardo had an army to lead, an empire to bring down. I know you can fight this thing. Zenobia continued in the far speaker's croak. You let me live. You know how evil it is. It will destroy you, Renardo. It will destroy everything you love. He had tried to convince himself that this time he would control the Iblis Stone. But he could feel his will becoming brittle. She was right. He would get rid of it. Right? Now. Or now. He didn't really want to. I know. I'll go to the mountains, Renardo thought. I'll find the strength to do it in the peace and quiet there. As the farfarer landed at the foot of the mountains, Renardo was surprised to find Lapino there. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, uh, you, you wouldn't believe it. I was stowed away on an imperial courier ship, uh, dressed up as a combat nurse carrying a general's beak transplant. This is not a great time, said Renardo, who was pretty sure he did not, in fact, believe Lapino's story. That's when you need your friends, said Lapino. I just need some peace and quiet, said Renardo, and grimly set out on the path. Renardo told his friend how he had slaughtered the toads and how he had nearly slain Zenobia. A terrible burden, this Iblis stone, sympathized the rabbit. Yeah, but I need it for the rebellion. Do you now? You know, you were a pretty fine fighter before you were wielding a demonic decoration. Oddly, the sword wasn't whispering at him to kill the Pino. Up ahead in the mountains, there was a peaceful spot. If he could rid himself of his burden anywhere, it was there. There was a sign. Take the goat across first.
fight and let it do all the killing for you. But that wouldn't be sporting, would it? Or fun? Open, says me. Renato thought it would make a difference. Snatching the Iblis Stone before the Emperor could get it. And it would destroy him. The Nomia and the Pino. They were both trying to save him. Peace. That was what he needed. So much for peace and quiet. There was Lapino. Again. You're stronger than some dumb rock, Lupino said. Let's just bury it, and no one will ever find it again. Bernardo could feel the spirit energy of all those dead ravens inside him, pecking away. Uh, the rabbit was right. Even if the rabbit was a traitor, he was still right. He tore the Iblis stone from his gauntlet and threw it into the hole Lupino had dug. The stone was silent. Probably sulking. Now whoop those Imperials, said Lapino. Are you coming? Ah, no, I can't come with you. It's my old injury, you know. Recently, it's been acting up terrible. I'd be no use to you at all. So Renardo boarded the Farfarer alone. Renardo felt lonely on board the Farfarer. How could his old friend Lapino, miraculously escaped from the Empire, leave him to face the final battle alone? Well, he'd abandoned Lapino before, hadn't he? It was only fair. And of course he felt lonely. He'd given up the Iblis Stone and all the souls he fed it. Of course he felt alone. But he had done the right thing. It had been hard to do, but there was no better feeling than that. Zenobia would be so proud of him. The battle, alas, was not going well. He no longer had the stone, and he'd never gotten the core. Lapino wasn't with him, and he was up against Zenobia, out there somewhere, maneuvering the Emperor's forces. The rebels had been outnumbered from the start, and he still had that aching longing for the stone. But that is what it means to be a hero. He would fight his way to Zenobia. He would show her what he was capable of. Just him, with no diabolic accoutrements. He would win, no matter the odds. It was like the world's deadliest bowman right by his side. Yes, that 
was it. Pirouette, slash, parry, dodge. Renato had never done such good work in a fight. He wished the poets were allowed to sing of his exploits for his old age. Maybe he wouldn't have to kill Zenobia. Maybe he could defeat her and take her prisoner. Then he could turn the tide against the Emperor. If she wasn't crowned princess, once this was all over, she'd have more time for him, right? He was getting nowhere. Fast. Soon he'd confront the Emperor. Again. This time, he'd make an end of it. He'd screwed up last time, but he had a good feeling about this time. Renato fought his way to the Emperor's ship. He was exhausted, bleeding, but he'd found the strength to reject the stone. Zenobia came out of the ship. Renato! she shouted, and then she fell down and died. Lapino was behind her, wielding a sword that seemed to suck all the light out of the sun. You idiot! You threw the stone away! cried Lapino. You said it was evil! It hates sanctimonious pricks like you, laughed Lapino. We're having a grand old time. Renato turned and ran. But no matter where he ran, Lapino jumped in front of him until Renato was cornered. That boy could hop. You wouldn't do this to an old friend, would you? Cried Renato. You mean this? Said Lapino as he slid the sword into Renato's guts. Damn it.